The Polish-Lithuanian War was an armed conflict between newly independent Lithuania and Poland in the aftermath of World War I. The conflict primarily concerned territorial control of the Vilnius region, including Vilnius, and the Suwalka region, including the towns of Suwalka, Augusto, and Sejny. The conflict was largely shaped by the progress in the Polish-Soviet war and international efforts to mediate at the Conference of Ambassadors and, later the League of Nations. There are major differences in Polish and Lithuanian historiography regarding treatment of the war. According to Lithuanian historians, the war was part of the Lithuanian Wars of Independence and spanned from spring 1919 to November 1920. According to Poland, the war included only fighting over the Suwalka region in September-October 1920 and was part of the Polish-Soviet War. In April 1919, Poland captured Vilnius and came in contact with the Lithuanian army fighting in the Lithuanian-Soviet War. Faced with a common enemy, the Polish-Lithuanian relations were not immediately hostile. Poland hoped to persuade Lithuania to join some kind of Polish-Lithuanian Union, which Lithuania saw as loss of independence to Polish federalism. As bilateral relations worsened, the Entente drew to demarcation lines in hopes to stall further open hostilities. The lines did not please anyone and were ignored. When a Polish coup against the Lithuanian government failed in August 1919, the front stabilized until summer 1920. In July 1920, Poland was losing the Polish-Soviet war and was in full retreat. The Lithuanians followed retreating Polish troops to secure the territory, assigned to Lithuania by the Soviet-Lithuanian Peace Treaty. The Soviets were the first to enter Vilnius. When Poland achieved a major victory in the Battle of Warsaw and forced the Soviets to retreat in August 1920, Lithuanians defended their new borders. Poland did not recognize the peace treaty and claimed that Lithuania had become a Soviet ally. Fighting broke out in the Suwalka region. During the Battle of the Niemen River, Poland attacked Lithuania on a wide front. The battle drastically altered the military situation and left Vilnius open to an attack. Under pressure from the League of Nations, Poland signed the Suwalka Agreement on October 7, 1920. The agreement drew a new demarcation line, which was incomplete and did not provide protection to Vilnius. On October 8, 1920, Polish General Luz Jan Eligowski staged a mutiny among Polish troops and marched on Vilnius to defend the right of self-determination of local Poles. The mutiny was planned and authorized by Polish Chief of State Joseph Pilsudski. Eligowski's forces captured Vilnius, but further advances were stopped by the Lithuanian troops. Eligowski proclaimed creation of the Republic of Central Lithuania with capital in Vilnius. On November 29, a ceasefire was signed. The prolonged mediation by the League of Nations did not change the situation and status quo was accepted in 1923. The Republic of Central Lithuania was incorporated into Poland as the Wilno Voivodeship in 1922. Lithuania did not recognize these developments and continued to claim Vilnius as its constitutional capital. There were no diplomatic relations between Poland and Lithuania until the Polish ultimatum of 1938. Background Military developments World War I ended on November 11, 1918 when Germany signed the Compiègne Armistice. On November 13, Soviet Russia renounced the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk and began the Soviet westward offensive of 1918-1919. The Bolsheviks followed retreating German troops and attacked Lithuania and Poland from the east trying to prevent their independence. They attempted to spread the global proletarian revolution, establish Soviet republics in the region, and join the German and the Hungarian revolutions. The Soviet offensive sparked a series of local wars, including the Polish-Soviet War and the Lithuanian-Soviet War. 
At first, the Soviets were successful, but came to a halt in February 1919. In March-April both Lithuanians and Poles began their offensives against the Soviets. The three armies met in the Vilnius region. Polish-Lithuanian relations at the time were not immediately hostile, but grew worse as each side refused to compromise. On April 19, 1919, the Polish army captured Vilnius. At first both Poles and Lithuanians cooperated against the Soviets, but soon the cooperation gave way to increasing hostility. Lithuania claimed neutrality in the Polish-Soviet War. As the Polish army forced its way further into Lithuania, the first clashes between Polish and Lithuanian soldiers occurred on April 26 and May 8, 1919, near Vivish. Though there was no formal state of war and few casualties, by July newspapers reported increasing clashes between Poles and Lithuanians, primarily around the towns of Merkina and Servantosh. Direct negotiations in Kaunas between May 28 and June 11, 1919, collapsed as neither side agreed to compromise. Lithuania tried to avoid direct military conflict and submitted its case for mediation to the Conference of Ambassadors. Diplomatic developments Poland did not recognize independence of Lithuania as Polish leader Joseph Pilsudski hoped to revive the old Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and campaigned for some kind of Polish-Lithuanian union in the Paris Peace Conference. Poland also did not intend to make any territorial concessions, justifying its actions not only as part of a military campaign against the Soviets but also as the right of self-determination of local Poles. According to the 1897 Russian census, the disputed city of Vilnius had an ethnic breakdown of 30% Poles, 40% Jews and 2% Lithuanians, however the percentage of Lithuanians was much higher in the surrounding countryside. According to the 1916 German census, Poles constituted 50% of city's population. The Lithuanians claimed Vilnius as their historical capital and refused any federation with Poland, desiring an independent Lithuanian state. They regarded Polish federalism as recreation of Polish cultural and political dominance. The Lithuanian government in Kaunas, designated as the temporary capital, saw the Polish presence in Vilnius as occupation. In addition to the Vilnius region, the Suwalka region was also disputed. It had mixed Polish and Lithuanian population. At the time, international situations of newly independent Poland and Lithuania were unequal. Poland, much larger in territory and population, was dedicated point number 13 in Woodrow Wilson's 14 points. It was recognized by all nations of the Entente, officially invited to the Paris Peace Conference, and became one of the founding members of the League of Nations. Poland also enjoyed a close alliance with France. Lithuania did not receive international recognition as the Entente hoped to revive the Russian Empire within its former territory which included Lithuania. Not invited to any post-war diplomatic conferences, it also had to battle negative propaganda that the Council of Lithuania was a German puppet, that Lithuanians harbored pro-Bolshevik attitudes, or that Lithuania was too small and weak to survive without a union with Poland. May-September 1919 Rising Tensions Demarcation lines The Conference of Ambassadors drew the first demarcation line on June 18. The line, drawn about 5 kilometers west of the Warsaw, St. Petersburg Railway, was based on the military situation on the ground rather than ethnic composition. Neither Poles nor Lithuanians were content with the line. The Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs rejected the line as it would require the Polish forces to retreat up to 35 kilometers. The Lithuanians protested leaving Vilnius and Rodna under Polish control. As German volunteers were departing from Lithuania and Lithuanian forces were preoccupied with battles against the Soviets in northern Lithuania, Poland mounted an offensive on 100 km wide front moving 20 to 30 km deeper into the Lithuanian territory. 
On July 18, Ferdinand Fock proposed the second demarcation line, known as the Fock Line. It was approved by the Entente on July 26. The Lithuanians were informed about the new line only on August 3. Two major modifications favorable to the Poles were made. The Suwalka region was assigned to Poland and the entire line was moved about 7 kilometers west. Again, both Poles and Lithuanians protested the line as it would require them to withdraw their armies from the Vilnius and Suwalka regions respectively. German administration, which had not yet retreated from the Suwalka region, also opposed the Fock line. The new line did not immediately hold the hostilities. After a couple of Polish attacks on July 29 and August 2, the front stabilized. Sedgny uprising the Lithuanians obeyed the Fock line and retreated from Suwalka on August 7, 1919. However, they stopped in ethnically mixed Sedgny and formed a line on the Zana Hansha River, Wigri Lake. They showed their intention to stay there permanently, which caused concern among the local Poles. On August 12, they organized a rally of about 100 people demanding incorporation into Poland. The Sejny branch of Polish military organization began preparing for an uprising, scheduled for the night of August 22-23, 1919. Between 900 and 1,200 partisans joined PMO forces. On August 23, the Poles captured Sejny and attacked Lazdiri and Kapshamiestis, towns on the Lithuanian side of the Fok line. The insurgents planned to march as far as Simnas. Lithuanians recaptured Sejny on August 25 for a few hours. On August 26, Polish regular forces, the 41st Infantry Regiment, joined the PMO volunteers. On September 5, the Lithuanians agreed to withdraw behind the Fok line by September 7. Poland secured Sejny and repressed Lithuanian cultural life. The Sejny priest seminary was expelled, Lithuanian schools and cultural organizations closed. After the uprising, the mistrust of Poles prompted Lithuanian intelligence to intensify its investigations of Polish activities in Lithuania. This helped to detect and prevent a planned coup d'etat in Kaunas to overthrow the government of Lithuania. Polish coup attempt sometime in mid-July 1919. Polish leader Joseph Piłsudski believed there were enough Polish sympathizers in Lithuania to carry out the coup. On August 3, a Polish diplomatic mission, led by Leon Wozilewski, in Kaunas had a double purpose. Propose a plebiscite in the contested territories and assess preparedness for the coup. On August 6, the Lithuanian government rejected the plebiscite proposal, stating that the disputed territories constitute ethnographic Lithuania. PMO planned to capture and hold Kaunas for a few hours until arrival of the regular Polish troops, situated only some 40 to 50 kilometers east from the city. The coup would be portrayed as an initiative of local population to free Lithuania from German influence while denouncing any involvement of the Polish government. Polish newspapers ran a propaganda campaign claiming that the Council of Lithuania was simply a German puppet. The coup was initially scheduled for the night of August 27-28 but was postponed to September 1. Lithuanian intelligence discovered the coup, but did not have a list of PMO members. Lithuanian authorities began mass arrests of some 200 Polish activists, including some officers of the Lithuanian army. Kaunas was declared under the state of siege. Polish press saw mass arrests of Polish activists, to whom no charge can be ascribed other than being Poles, as proof of systematic anti-Polish policies of the German-ridden Lithuanian government. PMO was little affected by the arrests and scheduled another coup attempt for the end of September. However, Lithuanians obtained a full PMO membership list and liquidated the organization in Lithuania. September 1919 – June 1920 – Minor Incidents After the failure of the coup in Kaunas, there were numerous small border incidents. 
On September 19, 1919, Polish troops attacked Jelwonary and encroached towards Ukmerge. On several occasions fights broke out regarding strategically important bridge over the Sventoji River near Vepraya. In October, when main Lithuanian forces were deployed against the Burmansians in northwestern Lithuania, the attacks intensified. Poles captured Salakas on October 5 and attacked Kapshami Estis on October 12. The front stabilized, but harassment of border guards and local villages continued throughout late 1919 and early 1920. In March 1920, the Poles attacked along the railroad stations in Kalkuni and Termantus. The situation was investigated by British and French observers and reported to the Entente. The situation somewhat improved only in late spring 1920 when most Polish troops were deployed in Ukraine during the Polish-Soviet War. At the time Lithuania faced a severe budget crisis, in 1919 its revenue was 72 million while expenses reached 190 million German marks. While the government was struggling to obtain financial assistance and loans, deep cuts affected the army. Instead of increasing its armed forces to 40,000 men, Lithuania was forced to cut them to about 25,000. July 1920 Soviet advance and Polish retreat Diplomatic developments In April 1920 Poland launched the large-scale Kiev offensive in hopes to capture Ukraine. Initially successful, the Polish army started retreating after Russian counterattacks in early June 1920. Soon the Soviet forces began to threaten Poland's independence as they reached and crossed the Polish borders. The conference proposed that the Polish forces would withdraw behind the Kurzan line. The Soviet forces would stop 50 kilometers to the east of the line. The Lithuanian forces would take control of Vilnius, and all other disputes would be settled via negotiations in London. Grabsky opposed the transfer of Vilnius, but under pressure of British Prime Minister Lloyd George, agreed to the resolution on July 10. At the same time Soviets and Lithuanians negotiated the Soviet-Lithuanian Peace Treaty, which was signed on July 12, 1920. Russia recognized Lithuanian independence and withdrew any territorial claims. The treaty drew the eastern border of Lithuania, which the Lithuanians continued to claim as their de jure state border until World War II. Vilnius region, including Braslaw, Rodna, Lida, and Vilnius, was recognized to Lithuania. On August 6, after long and heated negotiations, Lithuania and Soviet Russia signed a convention regarding withdrawal of Russian troops from the recognized Lithuanian territory. However, the troops began to retreat only after the Red Army suffered a heavy defeat in Poland. Territorial changes The Bolshevik forces reached the Lithuanian territory on July 7, 1920, and continued to push the Polish troops. The Lithuanian army moved to secure territories abandoned by the retreating Polish forces. They took Termantos on July 7, Tauragne and Alanta on July 9, Servantos and Musen Inkai on July 10, Kurnava, Molte, and Gidresie on July 11, Mazia Gala and Pabrade on July 13. On July 13, the Polish command decided to transfer Vilnius to the Lithuanians in accordance with the resolution of the SPA conference. Lithuanians moved in, but their trains were stopped by Polish soldiers near Kazimierzysk. This delay meant that the Bolsheviks were the first to enter Vilnius on July 14. By the time first Lithuanian troops entered the city on July 15, it was already secured by the Soviets. Poland sought to have Russians in the city as it would create much less complications when Polish army counterattacked. Despite the peace treaty, the Soviets did not intend to transfer the city to the Lithuanians. Indeed, there were indications that the Soviets planned a coup against the Lithuanian government in hopes to re-establish the Lithuanian SSR. Despite the setback in Vilnius, the Lithuanians continued to secure territories in the Suwalka region. 
They took Drusk and Inkai on July 17, Vistatis, Punsk, Jibi, and Sejni on July 19, Suwalka on July 29, Augusto on August 8. The Polish units, afraid of being surrounded and cut off from the main Polish forces, retreated towards Lomza. The Lithuanian authorities started to organize themselves in the regained areas. Lithuanian neutrality Poland claimed that Lithuania violated its claim to neutrality in the Polish-Soviet war and in effect became a Soviet ally. A secret clause of the Soviet-Lithuanian peace treaty allowed Soviet forces unrestricted movement within the Soviet-recognized Lithuanian territory. For the duration of Soviet hostilities with Poland, this clause was of a practical matter. Soviet troops already occupied much of the assigned territory and could not withdraw while hostilities with Poland continued. Lithuanians were also simply unable to resist Soviet troops. For example, when Lithuanians refused a permission to use the road. The Soviets ignored Lithuanian protests and transported their troops and equipment regardless. At the same time Polish soldiers were disarmed and interned. The largest group, a brigade under Colonel Paslavski, was interned on July 18, 1920, near Kruonis. On August 10, Lithuanians held 103 Polish officers and 3,520 private soldiers. Poland also claimed that the Lithuanian troops actively participated in military operations of the Red Army. This charge, based on memoirs of Soviet officials, lacks evidence. Further military clashes between Polish and Lithuanian troops in the Suwalka region were interpreted by Poland to show that the Lithuanian government has become an instrument of the Soviet government. Lithuania responded that it was defending its borders.